What's amazing is you can meditate for half an hour and you feel like time has just slowed down and there's no time. But yet you literally can just go on your phone to, as you say, look at a message and then half an hour has passed by. And then before you know it, the week's over. Now, the reason why weeks are just disappearing is because our brains are constantly engaged and each engagement has physical time based on the clock, right? There's only a certain amount of stuff you can do in a day. And if you're engaged for periods of that time, that's going to essentially disappear on the clock. Before you know it, the week's over. There needs to be a balance, right? One, if you're constantly running around doing so many things throughout your day, like you're going to burn yourself out. The issue is that today with so many distractions, is we don't take the time to work on that, right? It's, got, it's like my guru says that, you know, so many people get on a merry-go-round and they stay on that merry-go-round their entire lives. And what happens at the end of a merry-go-round, at the end of the ride, it stops and you get off exactly where you started. You believe that, <laughs> um, you know, when you're born, there's a set date to when you're going to die. And regardless of what you do, so if I ate McDonald's every day and I put on loads of weight, would I still die at, say, 105 or would that have an impact? And then is it to do with my, my decisions based on the life experiences that I am living in this life now? From what I know, it, you have those years. Like you have 105 years and like how you spend those years really affects the quality of your life. So when I was 21, I had my awakening and I was in such a high level of consciousness where I would go out and I would see through everything and synchronicities would happen in real time. It was almost like having, say, eight cars all in a line and you could literally just jump on top of each car and keep going until the end. And they were all in alignment. And then five seconds later, they were out of sync. It was that perfect alignment. And I was thought... Is it because I came off my Tourette's medication that it was that I'd been so fogged with medication and numb to it that that's what normality was? Or was I experiencing some high level of consciousness? And right now, there is some magical shit going on in this universe because I'm manifesting so quickly. I'm thinking and things are happening very quickly, which is happening where one thing after another is just in sync. And when I'm just letting go and going with it, I'm not trying to work out why it's happening or I'm just going to find out this. And I'm just flowing with feeling the most magical experiences are happening. And people are also telling me who are also conscious that it's something to do with 2024 and that there is some universal shift going on where if you're already conscious, you are kind of being upgraded to the next level. And if you're not conscious, then boy, well, it's probably not going to affect you. But for the people that are conscious, it's noticeably um different and so i'm thinking that i am actually going through a second awakening which i've literally lived for and longed for and wondered will i ever get back to it mm, yeah there's a lot of interesting things happening right now and i would definitely agree with you in terms of like everything is happening very quickly things are moving it's like timelines have been kind of accelerated right now it's very very interesting along with I don't know if you follow astrology, but Vedic astrology particularly, there's a lot happening in the skies right now, which is which, you know, can account for a lot of emotional volatility, a lot of changes in people's lives, a lot of endings, which may be really painful, right? Maybe like old structures are falling away and you're stepping into a new version of you. So it's a very, very interesting time and an amazing time to be alive. Like there's so much energy. I can absolutely agree with all of this. That's that's happening right now. And like banking systems right now are pretty much collapsing. Like the US debt, there is no way in hell they are ever going to be able to pay off that debt. So the only way out is for essentially the dollar to crumble where it becomes worthless and everything else just becomes a write off. And it's just the value is whatever you say the value is. So if somebody wants to buy this building, then it's like, well, I'll take Bitcoin, I'll take a hundred flock of sheep, I'll take 500 Rolexes or a gold bar because you can't trade in the dollar because the dollar's worth nothing because everything's just kind of come down to equal value. And I know that this is a long time coming, but I've always seen everything like barbers, 
literally all charging a pound for a haircut because so many barbers are setting up so many people are becoming yoga teachers so many people are creating businesses and websites and because there's so much of it you can't compete the only way to compete is to reduce the price like petrol stations during covid they all went up because there was a massive demand for petrol and now there's so much petrol stored that now it's just going down and if you want to have your petrol station be the main one in the area the only way you do that is to drop the price now everyone comes to you the other guy loses out he drops the price and if he wants to come back into top dollar then he drops the price eventually everyone's dropped the dollar so much that you're all trading equal value like back in the day where a bundle of hay was no different to some carrots carrots were no different to some gold gold was no different to milk and you're just trading on what you consider as value and you're right the shift is coming where we are not relying on corporations anymore and like crypto even like meme coins it's our own community currency if i want to create a meme coin with my friends at school and trade that meme coin if you want to buy my pokemon card we don't need the pound we don't if we don't need the pound we don't need banks and if we don't have banks there's nothing holding the value and it just comes back to the people Mm, yeah there's so many interesting things there like that you just said i mean like can you can you even imagine like going back to those times and and you know what if you think about it all of these things that we give value to like that value that we give to them it didn't exist entirely in our minds right you mentioned gold is the same as carrots is the same as sheep is the same as whatever right it's like it's true like gold only has value because we give it value inherently it doesn't have any value like it's just this metal that we use that we find in the earth just similar to all other metals and we use it to make shiny things that are yellow in color like <laughs> if you think about it from that perspective it's like what are we actually doing like what are we fighting over like it doesn't really make that much sense and you know i want to touch on one other point that you said which is that there's so much competition it's like the only way to compete is is to really continue to lower your prices and this is one thing that i i would kind of disagree with is that the way to stand out in this economy is to provide actual value right so being a yoga teacher myself it's like i've been to other studios and i know for a fact that they cannot deliver the same value because yoga you know it's this ancient practice that's been around for thousands of years and the actual value in it is the experience that's transferred and the only teachers that can transfer that experience are the teachers that have that experience on a regular basis right the teachers who have gone to that depth of the practice and most places can and that's the same thing in all industries right like look at fashion like fast fashion is so trash like it's such a waste of money like you buy a thing you wear it once or twice you wash it and it's garbage right like you know the seams are coming out like the cloth is like stretched and this and that like you, you really can't do anything with it right and so this is where it comes down to quality and i think that now consumers are really looking at looking for quality right they're willing to pay a few more dollars or a few more pounds to for that quality right if you want if you want to buy something you might as well pay a few extra dollars and have it last like 10 15 times longer right and you'll look better too because your clothing is of value the things that you consume are of value and you know and this is how i think that we're going to get our authentic economy back instead of just having ads everywhere for products that really don't add any value to anybody's life yeah, if you go online and social media, there is just shit after shit after shit being promoted everywhere for everything. Mm -hmm. And it's just nonsense. Quickly made to quickly plug online, make a few buck, get it ch as cheaply produced as possible and sell it to as many people as possible. When that f trend becomes a fad, on to the next. And then we've got over that and it's something else. It literally is just nonsense. And you're actually right. Even though to compete price wise you've got to reduce if you offer more value then you can actually increase your prices so let's just say that facebook back in the day was like the main social media platform and now there's twitter snapchat linkedin pinar there's just so many choices but like anything and even like drug cartels there ends up being only one right there's normally only like one alpha one leader one country in control so now rather than having all these chicken shops open like there are in London, literally there's fucking three next to them, pizza shops opening up, hair barbers opening up, essentially they'll go bust. And now because there's no competition, they can actually increase their prices. 
And if they're providing something of value more than the other guy around the corner, then he's going to get the business. So now we go from just getting in, getting out, getting in, getting out, new clothes, buy, get in the restaurant, eat your shit and piss off. Now it's going to be, I'm going to take time doing your hair. I'm going to give you uh, a can of Coke. I'm going to uh, put aftershave on you. I'm going to uh, do your beard as well, which takes extra time, but actually that's more value and you feel valued. So now you're going to come back and pay 20 quid for a haircut because he sprays you, he does your beard, he gives you a drink and he gives you a, a lollipop at the end. Whereas before it's just like in, out, in, out, in, out. And you can tell the quality is horrendous. There was a super uh, a clothing mm. brand called Zara near me. Ten years ago, I used to shop there, and it's quite expensive. The quality of the clothing was amazing, but now it's literally top shop H&M Primark shit. And you can tell the quality of the clothing. Holes, seams coming apart, it rips, horrendous quality. And do you know why? It's because they've realised that if they just mass produce, then people will come to them like they do H&M and um you know primark that they can actually make money very quickly but they've got to sacrifice quality and the quality mm -hmm. is horrendous now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and this is the death of brands right this is where you lose your customer base you lose your reputation because you're selling out right you no longer care about the service that you're providing your customers you know effectively no longer care about your customers and it's interesting because um, this leads into a lot of other topics. And one of my friends and I, actually, a bunch of us actually were sitting and talking about this a few days ago, how Google, if you look at Google, they used to have a clause in their terms and conditions saying, you know, we're doing all of this for the good of humanity. And now, or at some point a couple of years ago, they quietly took that clause out, which means they're doing it for money, right? All the things, all the services that are out there that Google provides and that we go crazy over because, oh my God, this is free. Can you believe they're giving all of this for free? It's it's not for free, right? Like it's not for free and it's not good for you. And, and it's the same with all of consumer culture, right? Social media, all of these platforms, all of these things are there to, like they're not there just to entertain you. They're there to like you are the product essentially, right? There's a great, um, there's a great uh, documentary about this, which I don't remember the name, which is not very helpful, but it talks about social media and how it influences your brain and how it can actually manipulate people. And I think they use this um, in one of the elections in the States where, you know, it's like social media because of the algorithms, they're very familiar with people like social media knows you better than you know yourself let's be real like they show you things to keep you on the app this is exactly why you pick up your phone and you're like okay let me go to my dms to check something you open up this app and you end up spending like three hours on there and you're like holy shit like <laughs> what just happened why did i even open this app to begin with and you completely forget it's because they know exactly what to show you they know what you're interested in and so the way that they use this information is to actually change the way that you think they show you things that you they know that you're willing to accept where you'll be like okay yeah this is logical like this makes sense whether or not it's true and then from there they'll take you further and further down this path which is how uh, i believe this is how trump won the election this is how he won several of his writings and all the things and like not to get into politics but like this can be used in like in pretty much anything right in sales in influencing like where you you want to live like the decisions that you make like what you wear like how you present yourself the way that you think like this is so so powerful i mean we're losing touch with with nature and ourselves and and for what so we can get some likes on some photos like what is the real point of this what's amazing is you can meditate for half an hour and you feel like time is just slowed down and there's no time but yet you literally can just Go on your phone to, as you say, look at a message and then half an hour has passed by. And then before you know it, the week's over. Now, the reason why weeks are just disappearing and then it's Christmas and then it's Christmas and then it's Christmas is because our brains are constantly engaged. And each engagement has physical time based on the clock, right? There's only a certain amount of stuff you can do in a day. And if you're engaged for periods of that time, that's going to essentially disappear on the clock before you know it the week's over and we're losing life the more we focus on things and those things are simply just things that stimulate us that increases dopamine levels and they get us addicted we're constantly chasing dopamine and as a result we're losing our time and what does that mean we're losing our life literally four years has passed 
and it literally feels like yesterday. But yet thinking about when I was at school feels like fucking millions of years ago. So what does that mean? Well, back at school, there was no constant stimulation. I was out riding my bike, playing football, walking to the friend's house. So that was all just time slowly passing. Oh, I've got to walk half an hour. It takes forever. I'd have to cycle somewhere. I'd be out just pick playing football. And I'm knackered in like 20 minutes. And I've still got like three hours to be out. But right now we could be on our phones and three hours just disappears. So the mm. consequences, constantly being engaged is it's losing human life, which is, you know, time basically. And that's why people don't have time. And they think, God, it's flying past. We're constantly engaged, whether it's Netflix, mm. whether it's work, whether it's our kids getting them ready for bed. That is where time is going. And actually, we just need to do nothing. Just do nothing. And it is hard because our brains are addicted to the, the chemicals that we get from these apps and shit. Mm -hmm. And we've only got... I actually ordered a thing on Amazon today. And it's called a countdown calendar for when you die. So it's got all the weeks in boxes, right? So you've got box at the end, which is 90 years old. Then you've got the box now. And you can see how many weeks you've got until you die. And the aim is that every week, you just colour in the box. So you can visually see, fuck, I've only got this many boxes left. And every week you don't do anything and you procrastinate and you fuck about. You're just seeing, oh my God, I'm going to die there. And I haven't done anything here. And I need to go travelling. I need to do this. I need to do that. Get a move on. And facing death is a blessing. People don't think about death because it makes them realise, what the fuck have I done in my life? And it makes mm. them feel anxious. So they avoid it. Actually, you should face it and be like, I'm going to die pretty much soon. My body's only got pretty much this amount of time left where I'm healthy and I'm energetic. Get on with your shit and face it. And doing that will make you do everything in a year that you'll probably end up doing in, in, in like 40 years. Mm. And now you can choose to do it again. And if you don't, then you die with no regret. Yeah, you know what, this this leads me to, to a few different things. Like one is that we're in a super like, like masculine, like do this, do that, do that, do that, like all the time, like go, 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 go type of society where it's like, there needs to be a balance, right? One, if you're constantly running around doing so many things throughout your day, like you're going to burn yourself out. And two, just like you said, you're constantly engaged. You don't even notice the passage of time. Like you don't stop to smell the roses, right? And this is, mm -hmm. and it's all of these little moments that make up our lives, right? And this um, reminds me of something that came up in one of my yoga classes. So I teach very intuitively and like all of the postures that come out, all of the words that come out of my mouth. It's like, when I go and sit in front of that class, like I just let go and let it happen. Like I don't, I don't ever feel like I'm actively teaching that class. And I remember... I had um, I had a woman bring in her husband just once, like as her as her guest, and the thing, the knowledge that came out at the end of the class was just like it, it just resonated so much, like with myself as well. And it was that, you know, if you look at life in this larger picture, right? If you look at it, if you kind of zoom out and look at it from a different perspective, right? From the karmic perspective, where we have many, many, many lifetimes, where what we're meant to do is actually reach this enlightened state where you know, where we don't have to come back, right? The reason that we have this life where we go through this process of birth and death and everything that happens in between is so that we can work through our karmas, right? So that we can raise our levels of consciousness so that they're actually unconditioned, right? So we can decondition our minds, deprogram ourselves and become this perfected being, right? Like the seed of that exists inside of us. But the issue is that today with so many distractions is we don't take the time to work on that, right? It's got, It's like my guru says that, you know, so many people get on a merry-go-round and they stay on that merry-go-round their entire lives. And what happens at the end of a merry-go-round, at the end of the ride, it stops and you get off exactly where you started, which means that you have actually not gained anything. You actually haven't done anything, right? If you look at, and I have a blog post about this actually, if you look at the cycle of karma, like this, again, it, your our lives, you know, for, for 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 120 years, whatever, like in the scope of the number of lifetimes that you have, it's nothing, right? Like if you have millions of lifetimes, one lifetime is absolutely nothing. 
But the thing is that in each lifetime, you're supposed to be making progress. And if you don't stop, if you don't slow down, if you don't take that time to go inwards and reconnect with yourself and, you know, work on yourself, then you actually like, what have you accomplished in every single lifetime? Yeah, we, we grow up, we have relationships, we have kids, we have houses, we have work, we, we do all of these things. And this is all on the surface. It doesn't really touch our inner being, our inner soul. It doesn't help us to go inwards. It only takes us outward. And so if you consider like the point of, of life and, and you know this journey that we call life to be you know reaching enlightenment, to be free from this cycle, then you know staying engaged in our outer world 24/7, it, it just it doesn't do anything for us. It takes away from our health, it doesn't let us sleep properly. We don't give attention to our meals. Like how many people do you see eating and scrolling at the same time? Like you're literally not even smelling your food, let alone the roses. What about the food right in front of you? It's, it just, it blows my mind. It's crazy. Like just the state and, and how many years did I mean, like, I remember when I was a kid, like that's when we had dial up internet. Like, you know, we used to get screamed at for, for, because the phone wasn't working because we were on the internet. And so it's like in this many years, like 20, 25, about 20 years, I'd say in 20 years, this is what the world has come to. Like, it's crazy. It's just, it's mind blowing. It's just wow i've just had a um a little uh epiphany whatever let's just say that four years in terms of years has passed by massively but because of like modern medicine foods the lifestyle we live that uh it actually doesn't matter because we're going to live an extra say 15 years so let's say 50 years ago people would die say at 70 and time would just be slow and right now, five years can literally merge like it's one year, but it doesn't matter because I'm actually going to live to 85. So the time that I think I'm losing, I'm not because I'm living longer. I wouldn't have lived longer if my brain wasn't constantly stimulated. So let's say you've gone from an ape to a caveman, a caveman hunting a fish, coming up with the idea of a spear to get the fish and then, you know, making a house, constant stimulation right he's creating more energy in his body he's stimulated his brain's getting bigger whereas a dumb chimp just eats banana and goes to sleep and he might live till he's like 10. what if it's actually this stimulation that is making us live longer um subject to not eating poorly drinking smoking where you're fucking up that what if we're living longer because our brains are constantly stimulated and we're basically increasing our brain muscle which means that we've got more life subject to not fucking it up by eating and put, drinking poorly do you reckon that could be possible i don't really think so i mean i think that being constantly stimulated creates a lot of stress in our systems mm. in terms of length in life like that would be a result of diet and lifestyle really like if you are eating things that give you heart disease essentially like if you're minding your diet if you're sleeping enough then this is where your quality of life will improve as well as likely the length of your life and meditation has a huge a huge role to play in this because this is how you're actively regulating your nervous system right you're reducing all the things that are creating stress and high blood pressure and tension and like all of these things in your system so and, and you know what again like leaning into the vedic knowledge and the vedic uh, wisdom what they say actually is that our lives are very 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 short relative to what they used to be there is a cycle of time with four you can say eras there's the golden age that i believe was you know you know don't quote me on this probably the silver then bronze and then brass i don't know so anyways i don't know but there are definitely four and in the first one which is called satyug the, the age of truth People used to live like a hundred thousand years like this. And you know what? Lao Tzu actually was a Rishi. A Rishi is an ancient seer. Like he was an enlightened being who originally was from India. Like he disappeared. And actually it's very interesting. But I don't remember who, like one of my teachers told me this. And But he apparently disappeared for a couple thousand years. He showed up in China as Lao Tzu. And then he was there for, for a while. And then he disappeared again for a couple thousand years. And he showed up again in India, right? Like like this is how long people used to live like you look at our lives now they're nothing compared to that but you know what is really interesting is is that now like now is a very very powerful 
time to be spiritual, right? So, okay, so on these, on these uh, four, in these four yugs or four eras, like we're in the fourth one, which is Kali Yug, which is like kind of like we've basically lost all uh, dharma is like righteousness, right? So we basically lost all these like morals of ours, right? And so in this time now, like to be spiritual is so powerful. Like you would make progress so much faster than if you than if you were spiritual back then when you lived a hundred thousand years long, right? Because you have so much time then, like it takes a really long time, but now like now you can make progress and like in this life in one lifetime you can make so much progress and so it's a really powerful time to be spiritual and you know i think that it's this it's like releasing this tension this trauma and all the things to like that's what helps us to live longer and to live better lives as well and you know i don't even want to say that it helps us live longer because you know sometimes it's just written that okay well, i'm gonna live until 30 and that's it like i'm gonna like that's it i'm gonna croak i'm done <laughs> and that was actually another thing which should really scare people because it's like okay like i'm doing all of this to save up so that i can do this but like what if you die tomorrow like nobody knows right yeah you're right so meditation increases your telomeres and that is your lifespan so therefore the opposite would be you die younger if you're constantly stimulated then mm. you'll die younger. So stimulated meaning you're on a phone watching a uh, a car crash or watching someone getting beaten up. Well, that's going to create like this fear, anxiety, this sadness, this fuck. That's so scary, which is a negative emotion. It's going to create cortisol and the stress, the stress, you know, chemical. So you're right. Being stimulated probably doesn't increase your lifespan. Um, but then again, let's say you look at politicians in America. Why is it that they're all really, 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 really old? It's because they're constantly stimulated. They're constantly having to learn new laws, new policies, be on their toes, interviews. Someone's trying to take them down, saying they're wrong and they've got to have an answer. Something to do with being stimulated, but not with things that are causing you stress. And then you could say that they're so used to, their body's so used to the attacks and the interviews that they're just becoming like it's almost like they're numb to that feeling of stress and anxiety it's like a norm it's like their body has adapted to that stress and that pressure that their body doesn't respond anymore almost like a smoker live until they're 90 but being happy it's not doing anything because their body's just got of become numb to it um so so based on that brain stimulation does make you live longer but is it what you're being stimulated in that decides whether or not it has any impact because i can guarantee that these politicians don't meditate but they live you <sighs> could say as long as a guru in india who just sits on a rock all day they both die at 90. so kind mm. of that's interesting isn't it mm, yeah i guess it comes down to like I kind of see what you're saying. I mean, I guess it comes down to quality of life at that point. So one thing I would say is that you definitely don't want to be like unstimulated at all because like if your brain's not doing anything, like it's either you lose it, you use it or you lose it, right? Like that definitely applies. But I mean, taking on all this stress and taking on all these things like this reduces the quality of your life, right? So now I would say, so now I would say that, you know, your lifespan is probably, I would say that it is written, right? Like written in the sense that like you can go to an astrologer and ask them when you're going to die and they can pretty accurately tell you like on this day at this time you're going to die right <laughs> like it, it's all written when you're born like the the karma of your life like the blueprint of your life is in the skies like this is what vedic astrology is it tells you many of the life events it can tell you can it can really tell you pretty much as much detail as you want to go into and i would definitely wouldn't recommend doing this but like you can get a lot of details you can get yeah you can get a lot of details <laughs> but what i would say is that like this lifetime should be used to to approach the self right it should be used to raise your consciousness raise your consciousness it shouldn't be used for other things and you know some people also live artificially long right like there's so many medications out there that'll you know, reduce your stress that'll thin your blood so that all that uh, cholesterol you have jamming up your arteries doesn't really affect you in that way because you're taking this medication to to do something about it right so there's also that aspect of you know extending your life via artificial means right or like yeah you can definitely say artificial means because it's not something you would find in nature right so 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, in terms of your other comment, it's funny because I had a friend who used to get, he used to get so mad about this. He used to be like, you know what, I can live, you know, I can exercise every day, I can eat right and like whatever. And some people smoke their whole lives and it doesn't make a difference. Like it's so unfair. <laughs> I think it's all, you know, it, my belief is that it's all written. Like you come here for a certain period of time, you come here to do something. Once you've fulfilled that purpose, it's like, that's it, you're done. Like you go on to the next lifetime to do the next things, like to do the next things that you need to do for your own growth, for the growth of the people around you and all of those things. Let's just say that I'm written in the stars to die when I'm say 105. Well, if I eat really, really bad and I don't take vitamins and I don't gym and go to the spa and do sauna, steam room and ice bath, am I still going to die 105? Or does it not matter what I do? I'm still going to die 105 interesting so i would i i think that it doesn't matter i think like you're meant to live that long and you will live that long and now there is also the case of like accidental death so it's very interesting so i don't know all like a hundred percent of the details like in and out but i like from what i've heard from people speaking about the scriptures if you die before your ordained time like let's say like you accidentally i don't know fell off a bridge or like somebody shot you and they weren't supposed to shoot you or like I don't know, something happens and you die. But this is where like things like, uh, and I really don't want to go into this realm, but this is where they say that your soul kind of lingers until the time that you were supposed to die. So like, let's say, um, let's say you died at 20 and you're supposed to live until you were 120. So now you have a hundred years and you kind of have to like linger in that area and like, I don't know, do whatever. And like, it's a really shitty place to be because in that realm, in that like, realm of existence there's like time doesn't exist in the same way that it does for us right for us it's like um you know 24 hours is a full day and we know that in um, 365 days a year has passed right we've done one full rotation of the sun and so we can pretty much like calculate how many days are in a hundred years that we need to go through, right? That we need to live. But in that realm, it's like not a thing. Like time just like stretches indefinitely. So you're just kind of like there for pretty much eternity, like what feels like eternity. And you're just like, well, what the hell do I do? <laughs> it's like not a, not, not a nice thing. To <clears> so you believe that, <laughs> um, you know, when you're born, there's a set date to when you're going to die and regardless of what you do so if i ate mcdonald's every day and i put on loads of weight would i still die at say 105 or would that have a impact and then is it to do with my my decisions based on the life experiences that i am living in this life now for example in a past life i ate loads of shitty food and i died young so in this life it's been built in me to eat healthy and I will get the 105 years that I should have had in my previous life, for example. Um, you know, from what I know, and again, I don't know these scriptures in and out, but from what I know, it you have those years. Like you have 105 years and like how you spend those years really affects the quality of your life. And, and you know what, maybe like you die on the way to McDonald's. Like now you're now you're stuck in that other place where you're just like, well, now I have to sit here until I was supposed to die because because <laughs> I accidentally died on the way to McDonald's. You know what? Um, these are kind of like details that I'm not too too sure about, but I would say that like, yeah, I mean, this is this is where we came back to that first point, right? Like you can live healthy, you can eat all the good things and like do all the good things, and then someone else can be like smoking their entire lives and you know you can both live the same amount of time but the person who was smoking perhaps they had multiple surgeries perhaps they developed cancer perhaps they had all these things but the person who was eating healthy didn't right it's all and, and you know what this science in the bhagavad gita actually which is the the holy book in the hindu um it's interesting because it's actually considered to be history because this like happened and it continues to happen like it's a story of the mind and you know what happens inside and so what they actually say is that karma is unfathomable like it's so complex that you cannot fathom like how it actually works like there's so many different levels of it like you have your personal karma there's a family karma a societal karma karma of the place that you're in like there's just so much mm. so much there and so better to just not think about it <laughs> but do what you can to you know like meditate do the things like work through your karma 
And, and you know what? It's interesting because I actually went to an astrologer when I was living in India. So I was in India for, I, th I don't know if you remember, but last time we chatted, I was in India. Um, that was at the end of 2022. And this one lady said to me, like, she looked at my birth chart, so the Vedic birth chart, and she's like, your birth chart is actually like, you have a lot of stuff happening in your chart. Like, it's not the easiest chart. And then I was like, oh, like, what does that mean? And she's like, okay, well, one, it's not a bad thing because a lot of people, you know, they come to this life and then, you know, they, they grow up, they, they eat, they work, they sleep and that's it. They leave. It's that whole merry-go-round merry -go story, right? They make no progress in that universal progress that we're supposed to make, right? And so when you do have a chart that's full of all these things, or when you have a lifetime that you might consider to be difficult, then it's actually a blessing. You know what? And I was actually um, a mentoring like one of my younger cousins, like he had a really tough childhood and he was just telling me all these things. And like, it is a difficult time right now for a lot of people. A lot of people are going through spiritual awakenings. And, you know, sometimes the biggest question that we ask ourselves is why me? And actually it's a blessing. Like it's such a good thing because yeah you're struggling but if you zoom out and you really understand what's happening you're being guided toward liberation right and in order to reach that liberation you need to go through this suffering you need to be able to let go of it to like really take it out of your system so that you can reach that perfected state right that perfected state exists inside all of us like there's a version of you that only you know right like when, when it's quiet and there's nobody else around, that part of you comes out, right? Because there's no, there's no, like you don't need to be defensive or what is this person going to say? What is this person going to think? Like, you know, all of these things aren't there, right? You can connect with your authentic self and that's the version of you that we're working towards, right? And if you haven't gone anywhere to connect with that version, then like this is, uh, take this as a sign. This is your invitation to go ahead and do that. So for example, if I've done all the work in this life, and so when I die, will I come back versus somebody who didn't do all the work in their life and they come back and so they get it right? What happens when you get it right? You just That's come back great. and have a peaceful life. That's a great question. So when you get it right, you have the choice if you, of if you want to come back or not. So generally when people who have, so souls that have reached that perfected state, they have the option. And oftentimes when they come back, it's by choice to help liberate others. And that's what enlightened gurus are, right? That's, that's who those people are. Those are sages, right? Those are People who, who like, it's interesting because um, in the Bhagavad Gita, actually, so it's a conversation, right, between a seeker and essentially God in, in incarnate, right? He comes back in a form um, to teach this person, his name is Arjuna, the other person, he's Krishna himself, right? So, and then uh, Arjuna asks a question, I don't remember, he says, like, you know, like, um, anyways, but the answer was that, like, you know, we've both been here many, many times. The only difference is that I remember and you don't. Right. This is Krishna saying this to Arjuna. Arjuna is the seeker. And so that's the thing. Right. Like people who people who have such dense conditioning, like they don't remember these things. And the thing is, the beautiful thing is that when you start to to really elevate your consciousness, to release all those traumas and the stresses and all the conditioning, you can actually remember your past lives like you remember things from past lives. Like you remember people, you recognize, okay, I know this person, but I've never met them before. I know them from somewhere. You know, like this is what happened. Like so many things happen on this path. Like it's such a beautiful path. And this is why we go through spiritual awakenings, right? We go through all this so that we can learn, we can ascend, we can leave the misery of this world behind, right? Like we've experienced so many hardships in our lives and that's so that we can ascend, so that we can reach this level where we don't have to come back. And if you meditate, if you do these practices, if you practice yoga, breath work, all these things, then that journey goes so much faster. Right. Uh, let's end that there. Is there anything you want to promote or plug before we uh, depart? Yeah, absolutely. I'm actually um, opening up my membership very, very soon. Actually, no, I think I guess by the time this, this goes out, it'll be open. And so I do have a free PDF and it's called How to Overcome Stress and Anxiety in Five Minutes. It's a free PDF guide and um, it'll give you a little taste of this membership. And, and this membership is going to be everything that you need to progress on this path to go forward to free yourself so that 
you know, one, you don't have these lingering traumas from when you're young, you don't have chronic stress, you can let go of anxiety and depression and learn where it all comes from, right? So if you're on a spiritual path, and this is absolutely the place to be, this is authentic wisdom that comes from thousands of years ago. If you remember, we talked about the four yugs, right? This comes from the beginning, right? From when everything was dharmic and beautiful and orderly. And so definitely check that out. I will share a link. And uh, if you had one day left to live, what is the one thing that you would say to the rest of the world? Mm, I would say that you are exactly where you're supposed to be and you're taken care of and have faith that you're being guided. Thanks for listening. If you like this episode, please remember to subscribe, turn the bell notifications on, like the episode and comment below. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's yes, King Oliver. Take a look at the other videos to your side. And if you just want to listen to this podcast, you can do so on Apple and Spotify and most other platforms by going to talkwitholiver.com.